we have here the king of cups okay an emotional pull an emotional draw that you have towards a situation and uh, looking to the left this is the past okay you've been at a distance from it for quite some time you're not approaching it it's not in the palm of your hands it's something that is out there and you really want a specific outcome so what's um crowning this reading here is the uh, king of this is the king of uh, cups underneath we have here the two of acorns and um, this is like pretty much the two of wands okay mulling over a decision and it's something that is very transformative the wands are about passion or about desires or about the things that we're really just very naturally drawn to we want to get things moving we want to get things going it's all about you know taking action taking steps to get something or get where you want to go or to achieve something or to attain something but the fact that is the the two energies it deals with flip-flopping it deals with having two decisions that you have to make and once again this is an emotional decision it's something that you're really compelled to do and it's, it doesn't really make sense to you and being the logical sign that you are you know you guys are an air sign and your energy is represented here as the queen of swords okay queen of feathers queen of swords this is a bat and um, if you think about it, it's in a dark cave, right? It's in a dark and dank type of an environment. And uh, bats are blind. You know, they, they, um, they um, respond to sound, okay? Sound waves and sonars. And they respond, they're, they're so responsive to sound that they don't need to see. They just need to hear and they just need to trust, right? And what I'm seeing here is there is an emotional decision that you're making and you're filtering the facts through your head, through your mind, through that sense of rationality, you know. And what it's really asking you here is to have blind faith and to have blind trust because this is not supposed to make sense. There isn't a, an explanation why you're so drawn to something, why you respond in such a way, why that situation, that person, that thing has such a strong emotional pull or emotional impact on you. And so I feel as if you are like uh, filtering all the facts relating to this situation through your head and in your mind, it's like, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do anything about it because it doesn't make sense or it's not practical or it's not rational or it's just nonsensical or it's it's in a way that is in very much in conflict with everything that you believe in. That's what I feel. So I feel like there's a lot at stake, but the nature of this decision is because it's an emotional decision you might be using the wrong organ in your body to kind of make sense of it does that make sense that's what I'm sensing here that we're so prone to analyzing over analyzing mulling over um, attributing you know rational qualities to a person a situation or a scenario that we're dealing with and we're kind of like neglecting the key important factor in that it's appealing to our senses it's appealing to a part of ourselves that we're not able to give voice to to give credit for because as an air sign we think with our heads not with our hearts right and so i feel like you're very conflicted okay and um, I do sense you're in a state of suspension. So there was a decision here that has been made, okay? And I feel like it, it, it's involving something from the past, something that was something that you half-heartedly waited on. That's what it seems like to me. And um, let me give you an example. So it's like, we really want this one thing, right? And we're just like, no, it's never going to happen because, you know, how on earth could it reasonably happen? 
is not practical. It's not sensible. It's so far out of the realm of possibility. It will never come to fruition. And so while we can't deny the fact that we really want something or want that one thing to, to happen, to come into the picture for us. So we kind of, you know, go through our day. Uh, it's in the back of our minds and we go through the motions. We go through the day. But every once in a while, it creeps back in and we kind of wave it away and we tell ourselves it's it's just not feasible. It's just not feasible. So I, I feel for many of you, there's a there's something that you're half heartedly waiting on. There's still an emotional connection and a, a really strong emotional pull towards it. And I feel like there might have been a, a decision made from your end about moving forward, moving forward with the things that rationally made sense to you, your career, your reputation, your success, your worldly possessions, all the things that you can count on, all the things that have a lot of weight, real weight in your world. Um, this is the six of wands. It indicates success. Having, um, I also feel like fame and fortune as well, because in the traditional Rider Waite deck, this is uh, the man, he's on horseback, and uh, there are a lot of people giving him positive reception and accolades, okay? So I feel like, you know, it's in the back of your mind, and you're not really invested in it, and, you know, life goes on, you moved on, you focus on your career. You focus on all the things that rationally made sense in your mind to do. Go through the motions, go to work, you know, uh, take care of your family, things like that. And because of that, there is a yearning and there is a calling for the month of January in which you're questioning, I feel, did I make the right choice? Did I do the right thing? And what's coming through here we have the this is the lover's card this is the card of gemini underneath it is choices and trust okay i feel like you're having second thoughts you're having doubts you're you have tried to move on and then in the new year something is like it, it it's like the energy harkens back to a different time or a time before so possibly the previous year, the same time around the previous year when something entered the picture and you're questioning and you're doubting, did I make the right choice? Did I make the right decision? Is this like a merry-go-around that I can't really escape from? If it's a merry-go-around that I can't really escape from, then is it because, you know, it's meant to be? Is it in the cards for me? And so I feel as if you're having a lot of doubt about a decision that was recently made you don't give a lot of credence to it and it's not plaguing you in a way where i feel like um it, it interferes with your daily activities but crowning this reading what you're really thinking about and what is kind of like um in the back of your mind we have the hangman waiting in suspension waiting for a situation waiting for some contact waiting for uh, a, a turnaround okay and I also feel like there's an emotional connection here, um, deeply emotional and deeply spiritual, a, an emotional and spiritual connection that you have with another person. And I feel almost like the universe is telling you, you know, you have to be like this bat, having blind faith, okay? Listening to your inner guidance, listening to that voice within to navigate and to find your way. Because in this space, everything is, is, is pitch black, okay? The environment is really dark inside a bat cave. And you're not supposed to, you know, feel your way around to make sure that you're safe. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to be able to see. You're not supposed to know the outcome. Are you going to have a good harvest? Are things going to work out? You're not privy to that information. And what you need to do is just, you know, have, have faith that in this, in this ambience of like lack of information, lack of knowing, lack of knowledge, lack of ability to predict outcomes, 
it's talking about you know making the choice to really trust okay so let me talk to, uh, a little bit about this concept here queen of feathers okay and this is like I always look at this and I think of it as like um, Gemini Libra Aquarius it's like the perfect embodiment especially for uh, Gemini in the traditional Rider Waite deck this is the Queen of Swords okay and the Queen of Swords she's on her throne she's looking usually towards the right she has her hand one hand outstretched the other hand is holding up this big sword ready to cut okay and so let me just let that imagery sit with you for a moment because I feel like this is you this is like you know once burned twice shy okay your hand is outstretched on, on one hand but the other hand is holding up a sword just in case right I'm going to reach out but I have this this tool at my disposal to cut to hurt just in case the other person doesn't act correct or you know it's a situation where you're sending out like very mixed messages right on the one hand you want that connection you you want to reach out but on the other hand you're very defensive and so when we're dealing with that energy where we're like one foot in and one foot out or like one foot out the door testing the water and then retreating it's almost as if you're flip-flopping you're not really sure what you're going after you're not really sure you're you're not really sure what you really want okay and just imagine if you're dealing with somebody who is making their intentions very clear like the queen of swords okay who is very serious minded the queen of swords is also someone who's very serious minded but the fact is so just imagine for a moment you know if the shoe were on the other foot and you're dealing with someone who's like flip-flopping waffling constantly one foot out the door and constantly sending mixed messages how frustrating would it be to deal with that person right and so I feel like you know once again swap that energy and try to understand the sonar waves the the sounds the messages the intention that is going into you know your energy and how that energy is being perceived by the people around you the lovers card is your card is the card of Gemini is the twin it's like the the twin flame type of energy where you know you you have like um, you have I, I feel this like being of two minds okay split personality being of two minds your heart wants one thing your mind is telling you otherwise and with the Queen of Swords here the mind always overrules what the heart wants and so you could never reach a state of satisfaction your mind wants the the safe choice the practical things the stability your heart wants to roam your heart wants freedom it wants excitement it wants like all of these things that are considered frivolous risky um, but you know rewarding like emotionally very rewarding but I feel like you're built in such a way that your heart always um, lose out it, it loses out and you end up you know physically very happy but emotionally it can be a little bit empty and the number four it is about family it is about um, if you look at the astrology wheel the number four is about the home the mother the parts of ourselves that have been conditioned since childhood okay and uh, it's about our emotional needs how we fulfill our emotional needs so the number four year for all of the signs and especially for you guys it's about honoring and respecting what you need emotionally in order to be fulfilled and I feel like all of these things are not supposed to make sense you know so for example uh, you have work the next day right and you're just like oh I can't sleep but I really need to go to sleep because I have work the next day 
but I really want to watch this movie. So your mind rationally, you're like, I need to get to sleep. And then, but then your heart is like, I really want to watch this movie. And the movie is like two hours. So I'm going to miss out on two hours of sleep, but I'm going to be so happy during th these two hours that I'm watching this movie. And so I feel as if that, that rational part of your, your mind always wins, you know, it's like, okay, we need to sleep early. We need to be disciplined. We need to do things that are practical. We need to just, um, let go of frivolous things. And I also feel like, you know, with this strong energy of that number four coming into the picture, it was a way of life for you. It was like childhood conditioning. We have to do what is uh, expected of us. We have to do what, um, I want to say like, once we make a promise, we have to keep it. Once we choose a course of action, we have to follow it through there. You know, it's, it's like, it's very fatalistic. It's like failure is not an option. Once I choose this path, I have to walk alongside it or I have to walk along this path. I can't deviate from my plans, but you know, things change. Circumstances will come up where whatever path you've taken, it might not be applicable for you anymore. You might have outgrown this path. You might have outgrown this situation and yet you're still are you feel, still getting the emotional satisfaction on this path that you are blindly taking? Is it time for you to redirect your attention towards a different calling? So you have some choices here and I feel like there's so much riding on it. You know, like that farmer, um, a bad harvest could be the end of his life. He could starve. Whereas a good harvest can, you know, equate to so many new blessings that can come into his life. And so you're grappling with a lot of decisions. And I almost feel like there is a decision here that you're making. And I, I'm sensing that you're putting so much expectation into this one single decision that it might not be fair. So if it's a person, you're putting a lot of expectations and I don't feel that it's fair for the other person. If it's like a change in job, for example, you're putting so much expectations on the new location, on the job. Um, you're expecting that thing, that, that decision, that job, that person to fulfill everything that you've wanted. So keep in mind that you've been suppressing, you know, your emotional needs for quite some time. And it's like years of pent up, you know, self-denial, right? Not in a rational way, but I feel like, like denying yourself of, of like things that make you really happy. And then coming into this moment and you're just like going for something and then, or, or thinking about going for something, jumping at something, jumping at an opportunity, leaping towards a new way of life. And you're expecting it to fulfill all of your expectations or all of your, all the longings that you've been suppressing in the past. And, you know, that's a huge load to carry. And so it's really asking you, you know, to kind of like balance out your expectations a little bit and to be a little bit realistic. Because what we have with this, the, the traveler, this is the fool card. It's a really pretty depiction. It's a gazelle jumping from one cliff to the next. Okay. So this is a card about total abandonment. Okay. Like throwing caution to the wind, embarking on a new phase in your life, wanting to jump for joy and having blind faith pretty much. So you're coming from a space where you might have been closed off, defensive, flip flopping, um, one foot out the door. And you're jumping into a new phase where you're all in, okay? Like no holds bar, like caution to the wind. And I feel like this has been a, like long in the making. You don't have any baggage that's holding you back. You're kind of like in the limelight. All It's like everything coming to light with the sun in the background. And so I feel as if if the month of January started out with a lot of uncertainty, 
there's going to be clear answers, decisions, and resolutions coming through at the end of January. You're going to be very sure about what it is that you're going for. So with this choice that you're making, you know, do I make the rational choice or do I follow whatever is in my heart? At the end of the road, the end of January 2020, we have here the Ten of Wands. Okay, this is pretty much the unburdening process. Okay, the Ten of Wands is all the obstacles, all the things that kind of bog us down. Um, possibly expectations from other people, responsibilities that we have to take up, and uh, things that we we do out of obligation, out of uh, the sense of responsibility. And we don't have to live in that or or burden ourselves with that anymore because we have a new phase that is coming into our lives to ask us to shed the baggage okay shed the responsibility and just kind of like live our life a little bit more unencumbered and a little bit more free 